good morning, Brad and your friends. Mr. Serpico, today uh, from math class, we are going to talk about front end estimation to estimate differences. Yesterday, we looked at front end estimation to estimate sums. We talked about the similarities and differences between rounding and using a different type of strategy, estimation with adjustment, and how sometimes one method can be more precise than, than another. Um, and that's that's for you guys to, to explore and decide as you read and interpret the problem and what it's asking you to do. So today we think about the word differences. And whenever you think of, whenever you hear the word difference, what's the difference between and you're in math class, it, it means subtraction. The way this strategy plays out in subtraction is slightly different than the way it, it manifests and plays out in addition. The other thing we'll look at either in today's lesson or in future lessons is the idea of compatible numbers. So if you're looking for something to read ahead and research about is, is compatible numbers, but today we will be focusing primarily on front end estimation for differences. Let's take a look at our first example. 7,594 minus 2,831. So the first thing you're gonna do is the front end estimation strategy we learned yesterday. It's the same thing uh, in the case of these two, these two numbers as it was with uh, yesterday's addition example. So you just take the first digit, the seven, and then everything else will lump off as zeros for now. So 7,000 minus 2,000. And 7,000 minus 2,000, as you guys know, is 5,000. Now the next step is where things can get a little tricky in math and focus. And you're going to look again at this number and you're gonna to look to the hundreds place value this time. So you've got 831 and 594. 831 and 594. Which of these two numbers is higher if you were just looking them and isolating the numbers as uh, values up to the hundreds place value? 831 is higher. So we're gonna take that number first. What's the front end estimation value of 831? Well, you take the first digit and make everything else zeros. So the next step is that you're going to write 800 minus 500. I don't want you to worry about this number being second in the order of the subtraction number sentence. Just take the two hundreds uh, values of the two respective numbers. Use the front end estimation strategy, as I showed you here, 800 minus 500 due to the subtraction, which is 300. And like the Sixers once said, trust the process. So 300, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself, hey, boys and girls, quick cameo from Mrs. Holshue. She's here to help support Hi Ted. Guys, I miss you all. all. Right. We'll see you soon. Yeah, getting ready. Board meeting, nine to nothing last night. So she's going to be, Miss Holshue's going to, there was a little commercial. She's going to be fixing some technology. And uh, I'm going to go back to this problem. So we've got 800 minus 500 is 300. And you're going to round that to the nearest thousand because the problem is dealing with place values up into the thousands. So 300 to the nearest thousand. Well, if that was on a number line and this was zero and this was a thousand and 500 is in the middle, right? 300 would be in here. So that's going to go back to zero. So to finish the problem, the hundreds lump off to zero, which lumps off what well, lumps off to 300 when you subtract, which round back to zero thousands. So 5,000 minus zero is going to be 5,000. If you're looking at this problem using front end estimation with adjustment for subtraction. So let's do the actual. So 
So we're going to investigate how close the front end estimation with subtraction was the method I just showed you to getting the actual answer. If you remember, the estimated answer we got was 5,000. So let's do the actual. Uh, 4 minus 1 is, is 3. Uh, 9 minus 3 is 6. 5 minus 8 you can't do, so we're going to regroup. We're going to borrow from the 7, make it a 6. We're going to take that 1,000, and we're going to move that over to the hundreds place. So now you've got 15 hundreds minus 800, essentially. But we'll do 15 minus 8 and get 7. And then 6 minus 2 is 4. Put our comma in. 4,763. What would that round to? If we rounded it to the nearest 1,000, well, that would round to 5,000. So you can see how the front end estimation with adjustment for subtraction was pretty accurate in this case. So your teachers will meet with you today and we will do, you will do more practice with this skill. It's a little tricky, but with practice and patience and uh, you can't beat a team that never gives up, Babe Ruth once said. So don't give up, keep trying and play with, play with this method for subtraction. The other thing that's important to remember here, boys and girls, is, is to do the actual work. If you can do the actual subtraction and get your answers accurate, that's really important as well. So if you're if you're on an assessment and you're and you're trying to to demonstrate how to do something and you, and you and it's not coming together the right way, you're not applying the new estimation strategy accurately. Some something seems off. Use your number sense. Go to your scrap paper and work out the problem the best way you know how. And a lot of times when you do that, you're going to realize where you went off with your estimation strategy. Just you always have to have that number sense. That's what estimation and rounding is. If you get an answer in your estimation and it just doesn't seem accurate or possible, listen to that instinct, listen to that feeling and, and try it again. Thanks for your attention today, kids. This was math, math class. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in person real soon, some of you. And some of you uh, continue to do a tremendous job being safe at home and tune in to your great uh, teaching uh, from your Radnor teachers. Have a wonderful day. Hey kids, I mentioned in the intro that uh, there would be a part two of, of today's lesson. It's all under the umbrella of lesson 1.4 for Math and Focus. The next concept we're going to explore in this part of the video is the idea of compatible numbers. So compatible numbers. When you think of the word compatible, you think of getting along together in a perfect harmony. Here's my little music note here. Um, you think about your teachers on the on the Radner uh, team, uh, Mr. Mancini, Ms. Ben, Ms. Willens, uh, Ms. Liston, and Ms. McAuliffe. We're very compatible. We work really well together. So we 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 plan together. We talk about some issues we're facing together, and we solve those problems together. And that's what compatible numbers do. They work well together to solve the problem. Compatibilis is the Latin word, and it means consistent or congruous. So when you look at this word, co means together, and with, con, you know, means with. So these numbers are working with each other, uh, coordinating with each other to get a simple solution to a math problem. You're studying the American Revolution right now. Let's think of the word compatriot. Uh, compatriot means a fellow patriot. They're working together for a common goal for independence. Let's take a look at some compatible number estimation strategies that you can use as a mathematician, as a fifth grader, 
when you're dealing with large numbers or complex multiplication division problems to solve through an estimation strategy that's not exactly rounding and it's not exactly front end estimation with adjustment but it's a variation of those two and you think about the term compatibility and you think about what numbers are very compatible that I could use that lend itself to this math problem so it's requiring you to think about what you know uh, from your basic math facts and your basic understanding of place value to come up with a great estimated solution. Let's take a look at some, some examples. Let's take a look at an example of compatible numbers. The original problem is 3,465 divided by 6. If you think about the idea of compatible numbers, you're trying to think of fact families that go together. So 6, six times what number would get me close to 34? Think of it that way. So 6 times what number would get me close to 34? Because six, 6 times you know, any number doesn't give you exactly 34, but you can think of one, 6 times something is a little higher than 34 as a product, and 6 times something is a little lower than 34 as a product. And you, you probably have said it out loud already to yourself, um, 6 times 5 is 30, right? And 6 times 6 is 36. So if you were to just take this uh, 3,465 divided by 6 and use a pure rounding method to try to get a solution, if you just rounded this to the nearest 1,000 got 3,000 and you rounded that to the nearest 10 and got 10, you would get 3,000 divided by 10 is 300, right? How accurate is that? It's a little bit off. It's a little bit off. It's not as precise. So in this method of compatible numbers that we're showing you here today is you think of you think of a, a multiple of six, a product of six that's that resembles the front end of this number. OK, so 34. The first thing I thought of is six times five is 30. That's a little low. And six times six is 36. That's a little high. But let me use those as my entry points for my compatible number estimate and I'll show my teacher those on my assessment in my workbook and then the teacher will be able to see how you're understanding this or not and then you using your own place value sense that we built in lessons one two and three you'll be able to think um, does my answer make sense so 3,000 divided by 6 is 500 3,600 divided by 6 is 500 versus the rounding method of 3,000 divided by 10 equals 300. I'm going to pause it right here, and I'm going to show you one more example. Okay, students, here's another example. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. Uh, again, we're estimating quotients um, using this compatible number concept. Here's another teacher tip for you. Try not to change the divisor. Try to leave that number as is. That's a good entry point to these problems. So nine times what number, and then maybe just box the first two digits of what you're looking at in your dividend. Remember, this is your dividend. This, is, it, this, this problem looks like this. If you were looking at it as a pure division problem and i know you've learned long division in fourth grade so a lot of times you ask yourself nine goes into two no nine goes into 29 how many times that's the same thing you're doing here it just visually looks a little different but when you're thinking compatible numbers and you're trying to come up with solutions think of nine times what number gets me close to 29. Think of it that way, that might be helpful.